Welcome to your fifth Python web scraping tutorial. In this tutorial, we'll be downloading stock data from other sources other than Yahoo Finance, just to show how versatile web scraping is. Another place where you might find stock data is Google Finance. So as you can see, it's pretty much the same as Yahoo. Type in your symbol, hit enter, and we can see from this URL up here that Q is what we searched for, so probably query, and then here's the symbol that we searched for. And I actually don't think we need the, all the rest of this, so let's test that by getting rid of it, and then hitting enter, and it brings us to the exact same page. So here's our simplified URL, and we'll just paste this into our file. So what I have here open is a Python file, and that file is actually in the Python 27 folder. So wherever you have Python installed, here's the exe file for Python. And I actually put this file in a directory called Google Price. And here you can see it. So in this tutorial, I'm going to be running the programs from the text editor just because it's easier to use. So I'll say s equals this and then print s. And just to show you that this works, I can go into my Python shell, and I can actually type exec file, and then in that function it takes where your file is located. So my file is located in Google Price, backslash, scrape, dot py. And then if I hit enter, it prints out what I have in my file. And then in order to run it again, you just say Alt P and it puts your last command into the shell. And this is just a precursor to the server side Python that we'll be running. So Here's Google Finance, and we're trying to get this price here in bold text. We do the same thing that we did for Yahoo. Inspect element. Here we find our, um, our class here. And then we want to scrape this. So inspect element, and we can see here that it's the same as Yahoo Finance, span ID, um, some random ID, and then here's our last price. So we'll copy that, and then in our file, we will import our URL library, so import URL lib import re and then I will say HTML text equals URL lib dot URL open copy this URL paste it in there And then actually I'm going to read this file too. So this should be the response text from our query to Google Finance. Next I will say regex equals double quotes. Um, I have to actually grab that again. So we'll copy where the price is from our inspect element single quotes out here and then do the same thing as for Yahoo Finance just 
dot plus question mark and then in here we actually don't care what this number is because it looks like this number is unique to the stock so in here we'll just put um, any string of any character repeated any number of times and then we'll do um, pattern equals re dot compile regex then we'll say results equals re dot find all pattern comma html text so we're going to search in html text for some string that matches this pattern actually we need the open um less than less than sign there so this should find our results and then we'll print out our results hopefully there's no errors in this Alt p and it finds exactly what we want 460.16 and what do you know that is the price of apple on google so this is a pretty good way to find the stock price but it's not the best so somewhere else we might be able to find the stock price is by inspecting element and then this time we go to the network tab and then when we hit our refresh it shows whatever the server is sending to our browser so you can just look at these things and when you click on one of them it has headers preview response cookies so we'll go to preview just to see what each of them means and a lot of these little gifs or gifs are the uh, web browser communicating with another server because it can only communicate over requesting images because of the same origin policy which most browsers have so we're just looking through here for anything we might find useful um, let's see Um, I haven't found anything yet. Get prices. This looks interesting. And it looks like it's ha it's recurring. It's making this get request quite, a it's made it twice so far. So it looks like it's trying to refresh the prices. And request method get. A get request is basically just the browser making an Ajax call to a server. So we'll copy the request URL, paste it into the browser. Let's see what we get. Oh, wow, what do you know? Looks like a CSV. And up here we see some parameters. So I equals 120. Instead of making I equal to 120, why don't we make I equal to 1000? And that did something. It made us get less results, so let's try i equals to 1. Hmm. That didn't do anything. i equals to 10. So it's this is something that's hard to figure out, is what all this stuff actually means. So D, C, V, O, H, L. So open, this is probably open, this is probably the high, this is probably the low, and this is probably the close. So let's not get D, let's not get V or any of this, let's just get the, the close price, because that's all we're interested in. So now we have a row of just the close price. And we can see 460.16 is the last, the last row of this this file. And the reason why I would prefer to get this 
file here as opposed to hold on this file here is because just look at the difference in um, just look at the difference in time it takes to send the file so if I go to the timeline and I hit refresh or hold on So we'll go to events in the timeline tab. Okay, so we'll do record and then hit refresh. And we can see how many milliseconds it's taking to load all this stuff. So it took, I can't even read this, but you can actually see how long it takes to read. And just by common sense, it takes a lot less time to load, to load this file as opposed to this file. Because just look how long this file is. It's huge. It's 800 lines compared to 34 lines. So we're looking at just the page source of each file. This file is 34 lines long. This one is almost a thousand lines long. So we're only getting one price. So it doesn't make sense to download a huge file. So we can actually just take this URL instead. And we can read it. And then this let's print it out and see what we get. Print HTML text. And then We'll run it, and this is what we get, HTML text dot split, see what we get. Oh wow, looks like when we did split, it split everything correctly. So we just have to get the last element of this file, which is the last price. So we can do print HTML text of split which gives us an array, and then we want the last element of that array. So we will do len of HTML text um, dot split minus one. See what that gives us? And that is how we get the last price of Apple stock on Google using this much faster method because we're only having to parse 34 lines of data as opposed to almost a thousand. And in web scraping, what you want to do is you want to reduce your network latency the most as you possibly can. It really doesn't make sense to download this. If your boss says, he wants you to download everything and it needs to be quick. If you're downloading this, it's going to take forever to find what you actually need. Just get this little file here and you are good to go. You are saving time, you're saving processing power on the server, and it just makes sense. So this has been your fifth web scraping tutorial. and. This tutorial was basically just showing you how to use the inspect element network tab. So the only reason we we're able to find this URL, this finance get prices and Q equals whatever, is because we used that network tab. That's not a public link. You can't find this file on Google.
you, you can't find this file anywhere on their sites publicly. You have to actually look at the requests being made across your browser and you have to look into it a little more. It's not so black and white as just what you can see. And that's probably the biggest thing in web scraping I've learned. Mo the most advanced topic is that there's a lot more to a web page than what you can see. So I'd say about half of the data that you can get from a website is data that you can actually see. So thank you for watching your fifth web scraping tutorial. And in the next tutorial, we'll be going over more of using the network tab to scrape data. Thank you.